Cash 22 is a legal matrix, the Constitution. This is things that are covered in DVDs. You're not one of the people. You're not a party to the compact. That's the Paddleford case. You're not a signatory to the contract. By contract law, you got to be a signatory. If you're trying to sell a house and you don't have any signatures on the contract, then you ain't selling the house. And you're not buying one either. If you're not part of the posterity, now this is how you get there without being a signatory is you become part of the posterity. Although I'm not quite sure if they don't sign them themselves later on. Since it's under private international law, they don't have the obligation to inform me. And they certainly have no obligation to inform any of their citizens of what they're doing. Because that's the public. And they're dealing in the private. The signers. The creators. The builders. Uh, you're a constitutor. If you don't know what that is, see Black's Law. Sixth edition is a good one. Fifth edition is also good. It's all the same definition. It says a, con a constitutor is one who by simple agreement becomes responsible for the payment of another's debts. So you're under the constitutors that agreed to pay. The, the United States agreed to pay the debts of the United States of America. Who did pass the buck to? All the colonists. Who then later in 1795, none of those colonists signed anything. They weren't Americans. They were still British American subjects. That didn't change until 1795 when they signed the John Jay Treaty, which is also covered on the web or on Matrix Solutions. The bankruptcy guarantee, that's Article 6, Clause 2, that all debts in the United States shall now be paid. I'm sorry, Article 6, Clause 1. Article 6, Clause 2 is the National Supremacy Clause, where it says this con Constitution and all international treaties signed by the United States shall be supreme law of the land and shall be enforced by all the judges in every state. That's where state sovereignty went out the window and all the judges are bound to enforce treaties. International treaties are supreme law, yes. Uh, power to punish offenses against the law of nations. Well, they have the power to punish offenses against anything if they want to as far as a citizen is concerned because if they have the right to punish you, they have the right to monitor you, which is what they're doing. If you break it, they're going to punish you, whether it's by law of nations or some other law that they've already passed for you to follow as a citizen. Power to pass all laws necessary. Well, that throws anything out the window there that's unconstitutional because that's in Article 1, Section 8, where Congress has the power to pass all laws necessary and proper to bring forward the Constitution into full fulfillment of what they want it to do today. So, therefore... As stated in the Visigoth radio presentation that was done on the web for the website, um, there's no such thing as an unconstitutional law. If they passed it, it had to be necessary and it had to be proper. Therefore, it's how it got passed. The president's going to have the powers of king and more than dictatorial power. This was actually said by legal expert, one being Patrick Henry and the other would be John Quincy Adams. Um, that these are the kind of powers he had. Republics are inferior to the monarchy. That's covered on the DVD set. Um, it was also in Hunter Miller's notes on the Avalon project. This is why you need this stuff. It's it's a great collection. I mean, I you know, I have. I don't like to get proud about things, but you have a certain thing I am proud about. I mean, or, or, or I can take pride in. I don't, I don't say uh, being pride prideful is a good thing or whatever. But after all of the chastisement I got from the gurus and the creditors and commerce and the LB Borks and all those kind of people out there. What's interesting I find today is that they're either doing nothing or most of them are in jail. They've gone to prison because they were wrong. They, were, they had no standing. They had no sovereignty. And even in the Avalon project in Hunter Miller's notes, we see that the Republic is inferior to the monarchy and the American ministers never thought of disputing the priority of equality of rank. So, here again, this goes into false for history rabbit hole that things were not what we were told when we were in school. Republic means to make public again. That's what republic means. So you're no longer private. And republics never last for a long period of time. Average time lifespan for a republic in the U.S. is overdue 219 years. Although technically, if you have a dictator and you have a king, you don't have a republic. That's just a hoax. All right. I won't go into any. Well, I will go into one more thing because we know this through Article 2, Section 3 in the Constitution that Lincoln had the power, or all of them did, but all presidents had the power to adjourn Congress and send them all home during cases of disagreement. And by the way, those executive orders are still running everything, and Congress is not there. They never were brought back. And the reason you can know that is because they're still passing executive orders. And they're still having disagreements up there. It's the purpose for having a bicameral system so that they never agree. 
just so you know what kind of rabbit hole you're in when you will start pleading rights in that constitution. Okay. International rights and duties of the individual. Well, we covered that earlier. So if you're not doing it, um, they're going to punish you for not doing it because it's part of treaty. All intellectual property is copyrighted under international law. Well, if you're their citizen, you can't copyright property. They do. We see this all the time. Now U S has copyrighted the Ebola virus. They also copyrighted other things like Brzezinski, who's a doctor curing cancer. They came back and copyrighted and patented all of his stuff so that he can't use it. 14th Amendment, American citizens cannot dispute the debt. Uh, these are just part of the legal matrix. These are things that are covered. Uh, UCC 5-116, this is covered. This is your choice of law and forum. You've already chosen it. That's with the oath of allegiance. You're now under their form. And you're not going anywhere else that they say to. This is master-slave law. One of the things that if any you've been on the presentations and heard the presentations that were done with that the predominant law on the planet is master slave law. That's the reason UCC 5-116 is here. Uh, you can't redeem a person that's not yours. In other words, that trust, it ain't yours. Everybody out there talking about that is insane. It, uh, from the standpoint that they haven't either heard me or they haven't learned it yet or they haven't read between the lines and they think somehow that somebody on this planet did something for them because they're so wonderful, I guess. I, I don't know. Um, rule 9, capacity and standing. Uh, rule 9A, this is Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. It must be particularized. So if the particulars and what I didn't know for years are the things that I carry around now, things like my passport, things like my ministerial appointments, things like documents and things that are signed by the U.S. government that, that recognize me as ambassador and recognize me as having standing. Uh, we went through uh, on the website and in the DVDs, there's nine cases for the treatment of U.S. citizens. And this is, I just mentioned a couple of them real quick nine parts of case law, which are some federal court decisions and Supreme court decisions. One says that prosecutors can knowingly charge an innocent person for a crime that never occurred. And prosecutors are immune from prosecution for conspiring with judges to determine the outcome of judicial proceedings. But one of the reasons for getting out of a system, if you don't agree with that kind of philosophy, if your discretion says you don't want to be a part of it, then you can quit it. Personally, I wouldn't want to be a part of it. Um, I've got in here, uh, this is the presentation, honestly, that I never did, uh, the, all the, putting all their catch 22s into one thing, kind of going through them right now. Where is the jury? This is out of title 28 section, uh, 1863 B six C where it says that, uh, that, that agents of the government cannot be jurors. Now, when you cross reference that with title 18 section 201, it says that, if you take an oath, if you t um, that agents of the government that work for the government can be a juror or are jurors. So if the juror is a, is a government agent, but government agents are barred for jury service, then where's the jury? That's why a courtroom is a judge's courtroom. It's his court. The jury's just there for show, kind of like Congress. Uh, Senate Resolution 62, you're a mere user. I won't go through that. These things, again, they're in a DVD. We show the resolution where it says that everybody, that all property belongs to the state. Everyone else is re reduced to mere user. This applies to, again, the U.S. legal matrix. I'm not saying it's true in every country, but I haven't seen a country yet that it's not true in. Governor be governed. Uh, Self-governor be governed. There is no fence. This is out of the Jamestown Exposition with Theodore Roosevelt. Uh, bonded at birth. It is true. Uh, this ain't the ultimate contract to get you into their slavery uh, system and bound up in the matrix. Uh, and of course, I intentionally misspelled the word birth here because of admiralty. Um, but if you're under bond, then, then you're caught. You're in there. You, you have to do something to come out. You don't have to rescind any of this stuff, by the way. Their exercise of the right of self-determination does not require that. It is a complete lateral move. It's like going right through that door in the movie. You, once you're Once you're out, you're out. That's it. Um, now there are certain other notices that have to be given, but it's not what most people think it is. Okay. Social security number, it means you're a trustee for the grantor, uh, title five. What is it? 552 a, I think it's section 26 or somewhere down there, 2852, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter, but it says that anybody who's receiving any kind of benefit from the government is a government employee. So you work for the government, uh, tort. There's only one remedy. Oh, that's in title 28. It says that tort is the exclusive remedy. The word exclusive means the only remedy. So if tort is the only remedy, then you ain't got any rights other than filing a tort claim. What's the problem with the tort claim? You can't sue your own government. You better fight. If you're going to file a tort against them, you better be on your way out the door. 
uh, Corpus Juris Secundum, chapter four, uh, I'm sorry, book number seven, chapter four, talk about hiring an attorney. When you hire an attorney, you become a ward of the court. A ward of the court is a person that's a minor, a person of unsound mind. Obviously, I have a Southern accent. I'm from the South. In the South, persons of unsound mind are insane. So when you hire an attorney, you just proved you're nuts. Uh, the money matrix, you're either in a trader business that's in the IRS code under definition 7701. Subsection 26, trader business means you're a financial agent of the government and you're doing business according to the Constitution by holding an office of honor, trust, or profit. That's how they tie it together. If you don't believe it's in there, go pull up the Constitution, do a fine, you know, a little fine window thing in, in the Internet, type in the word profit. You'll find it three times in the U.S. Constitution. That's what they did it for. They're making profit off of you. There's a certain amount of, I have to say this, even about having immunity. You can't get away from the financial obligation to become financially independent. You might be paying it to a different state, but if, especially if it's a brand new state, you may not have all the necessary commercial system in process. What's nice about it is they'll let you operate in their commercial system, operate on their people and whatever, as long as you do it in accordance with what they say that you can do. Like if, there's no such thing as even if you exercise self-determination, let's say you're a doctor. Well, you're not going to go operate on their people just however you want to do it because that's their people. They own them like they own you. So if you need to have a license, you're still going to have to have that license. And there is a certain amount of that that is a good thing. Who wants to be operated on or who, want, who wants to have anybody operating on their car who's not certified or somebody you know, doing sewer systems around the county that's not certified, that doesn't have a minimum level of education. You want some of these things in place. It's a must. You just don't want anybody doing it. You end up with chaos. Okay. The money matrix, uh, I got already went through that. Banking, deposit slip, the signature, that's in one of the presentations that when you sign, uh, when you have a bank account, and by the way, Social Security is a bank account, nine-digit numbers are bank account numbers. It's just a different routing mechanism. It's a trust account. It's a bank account. It's tied to the banking system. But inside a banking system itself, you sign a signature card. And it tells you in there that your relationship with the bank is that of creditor and debtor. That's they're the creditor. You know that because they can alter the contract. You can't. Now, either side can get rid of the contract anytime they want to and request the money or send back the money if they don't want to have your business. But the deposit slip was covered. Checks and other items are received for deposit subject to the provisions of the Uniform Commercial Code and any applicable bank collection agreement. Those bank collection agreements are with the IRS. So they don't have to inform you of anything. All that's covered. They don't have to inform you. They can close your county time. They don't tell you about a grand jury investigation, nothing. It's just good business and corporate law, the flag or whatever. I put this up here specifically because the red, white, and blue are the king's colors. This is the original flag that the United States went into battle with or the United States of America, George Washington, the Grand Union flag had the Union Jack on the other side. So if you think it got out from under Britain, they didn't. 